Hello, good afternoon, everybody. Thank you for joining our webinar today. My name is Ivory, and I will be your moderator for today's presentation. At the end of this presentation, we will take some of your questions. You may want to enter them into the question box. Just make sure that they are detailed and specific, uh, just in case the question is coming from something that we need to go over from the start of the presentation. And uh, that way, we will make sure that we know exactly what you are asking. Any questions that we can't answer today, we will be answering them offline afterwards, or you can submit or create a ticket onto the portal at windwards at support.windwardsoftware.com and support can be able to help you with that. And also now you can be able to access past webinars presentation on our website. All the presentations are there at www.windwardsoftware.com slash webinar. Um, you, you can be able to see everything in there. So for today's presentation, we're going to be discussing advanced inventory control, which is also a great topic. And our speaker for today, her name is Abby, and she's one of the tenured software specialist in Windward. And she's with the company for over four years now. So let's get started. Take it away, Abby. Thank you, Ivory. Hello, everybody. Good afternoon. As what Ivor have said, today we're going to talk about advanced inventory control. This webinar will discuss just the basic function of this module and its interactions with the inventory, invoicing, purchasing, receiving, etc. All right, let's then get started. So what is advanced inventory control? Advanced Inventory Control is a System 5 module that provides the ability for multiple locations to have stock and stock control, as well as the ability to choose stock from any of those locations at the point of sale during a transaction. For example, I sell pillows and have two physical stores or departments. My main store, Department 1, and second store, Department 2, both have the same floor layout. I have five aisles per store and each aisle has six shelves for a total of 13 locations. So my location would be aisle one, shelf one, aisle one, shelf two, and so on and so forth. I also have six shelves in the warehouse where I store extra products. I often have extra stock of pillows in different aisles in the same store so i would like to use advanced inventory control so i know which locations need more product added and where duplicate pillows are advanced inventory control will allow me to keep tabs on inventory in multiple locations in the store and sell from or restock the correct locations as well as move inventory to from the warehouse, especially if there is a special order. Now, how does advanced inventory control work? Advanced inventory control uses locations in System 5 to specify the physical location of stock in the store and the amount of stock stored there. When adding or removing stock, the associated stock rules will be followed. The mechanisms in place to assist with the management of the stock stored in these locations, including location quarantines, stock picking rules, and stock put away rules. So the location quarantines allow System 5 users with specific administrative uh, permissions to set a quarantine flag on a location. This flag prevents the system from picking stock from the location at the point of sale unless the user is logged in with the same specific administrative permissions. The quarantine locations are intended to be used for stock that cannot be sold until some action is taken, typically used for returns that need to be repackaged, inspected, and deemed ready for sale. They can also be useful for stock that has been um, pre-sold or put on hold for a customer. And the stock picking priorities are the rules that System 5 uses to select stock to fulfill um, customer orders. There are eight picking priorities. 
Speaking priority one through six, provide um, first through last locations to pick stock from. The picking priority zero equates to a not set value, which is selected from the one through six priorities it set. And the picking priority negative one equates to not suggested. Stock in these locations will not be automatically picked, but um, a user can manually pick from them. Next, the stock put away priorities are the rules System 5 uses to, play, uh, to place stock into locations when stock is received through purchase orders or receiving reports. These priorities um, follow the same pattern as picking priorities, but are typically used in the reverse order to help with um, stock rotation. When the highs and lows are set for locations, the system will fill the highest priority put away locations to the high value and then move to the next highest priority put away location as the stock is added to the system. And then we have two purposes that can be defined for a location. Fix, first is to fix purpose. This is a fixed physical location. And the random purpose is also fixed physical location that can be used to store a variety of stock temporarily. Typically used for holding stock that is already committed to customers, uh, customer orders or department transfers. All right, now I'm gonna pull up my demo here to show you how inter how it interacts um, with the inventory, invoicing, uh, purchasing, and receiving. But before that, um, I'm gonna show you my location segments here. So um, I went to set up tools, set up wizard, and then advanced inventory control location segment. So it's already set up actually. Um, I have here um, a zone, aisle, shelf, bin, and this one, um, this, this length column um, is the number of characters. So this one has one character, which is is this one right here as specified and then the aisle has two characters so this will show us like this and the shelf has two bin has four so i also uses uh, i also use uh, or enabled include dashes between location segments in, in the put in the input mask to, um, for me to easily read the location or identify the location. And once this location segment set up, actually, um, once you uh, purchase this module, um, our implementation specialist will assist you in setting this up. And once it's set up, you will be able to use the wizard for um, creating your signal. Uh, locations, segments and locations. So it's right under inventory and purchases, locations, and then location and maintenance. So here, you just, you just need to click the wizard and then you'll be able to ask to um, create the zones, the aisles, the shell, so on and so forth. So I have that one already set up. And okay, let's go to the inventory. Pick up an item. So here, so say for example, uh, say this, So once the um, advanced inventory control uh, module is enabled, um, you will have the locations tab here, where um, add locations. So to add new locations, you just need to click new. Then 
uh, it can just manually add it from here or just click into populate um, the locations um, set up by the wizard or added by the wizard. So say for example, All right, now with this item, I have four available. It is, and it is under location um, W5 and 5000. So it, it, we can actually um, move um, the stock from here, but it will move all the available stock. So if you want to do that, you just need to right click and then move to three uh, W34C location, or you can um, move it to a new location. Just click move to a new location and then click new, set up um, the new location or music recent. So let's say, and then just click that and it will fit from this location to this location. But if you want to only, only for example, two stock to um, W34C or this W5 5000 location, just go to menu, inventory and purchases, stock adjustments, and then stock load. So it gives us three options, select stock by part or location or invoice. So since um, we're going to um, move the stock from this item, so we have select the part. So that okay, so click add. Category is this one. Okay, and now it shows um, that this item, uh, it shows the current location of this item and shows the available stock quantity. And in here, quantity uh, to move, you just need to click this three dots here, and if, for example, on this location to have two, this one to have one. When it's done, just need to click OK. And then the last step we need to take is to um, hit this blue button. And that complete the stuff. So now um, location W44C has no one, W34C has no one, and W5 BB5000 has two. All right. And um, if you want to use location, um, you'll, or like, select stock by location, just need to click that one, click OK, click Add. Is the same um, pop up box or window uh, have you have to set or oh, put the location in or just go by your recent and choose your location. And also, um, you can choose the invoice where, for example, uh, let me just say, like if you want to add or move um, all the socks for, say, for this example, all the items or all the stocks um, that were added to this work order um, will be moved to another location or the other locations. So once you add the invoice, it shows you or it calculates all the invoice, sorry, all the items um, inside that invoice.
so right here so instead of um you take this you can just actually open the inputs and go um into each part of the record or in inventory item um record so instead of doing that one you can just choose to um move the stock through the stock move feature and then use the invoice so these are the two items on that work order. Just click these three dots. And then you have to uh, select the quantity to move to this location or to the new location. Right? And then just do the same thing to the other or to the second item. Okay, now let's go back here. So if I, um, so since, a so, so okay, this location is listed um, the last, as the last in the list. So let's say I um, set this up as the first priority to pick up. And then let's try to sell this item. Uh, Abby, sorry to interrupt. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, yes. can you arrange your, your mic? Because uh, I, I hear a comment here that says uh, your sound is not good. They're not hearing you better. Can you arrange your mic properly, please? Okay, sorry. How about that? Uh, guys, please let us know if you're still having a problem hearing the speaker. I hope that's, uh, or, or, or the surf sound is uh, better now. Thanks, Abby. You may continue. I'll let you know later, okay? Okay. All right. Okay. Thank you, Ivory. Yeah. So, okay, so again, um, sorry. Okay. sorry. Um, uh, yes, some here has says comments that sounds good on their end. So, yeah, I okay. actually I can hear Abby better. I'm not sure uh, which problem is that. It's it on is it on your end or in Abby's end? But yeah, I'm hearing her better. So yeah, please continue, Abby. Thank you. All right. Yeah. Thank you, Ivory. So again, um, I've set up the um uh, pick priority in this item. Um, I chose the third location on the list as the first pick priority. So let's try to sell this item and what happens. All right, now it shows the third location here because I set it up as the pick, uh, first pick priority. So you can, for example, um, if this item um, was uh, was sold to or from this location, you can just actually edit this, make this zero, and then change it to one quantity, and then click OK. And then it's, it, it now um, updates the location. So if um, I don't, if I didn't set this up as the first priority which let me just uh, go to the inventory record so if the period is not set it will um, it will choose the first location in the location step so for example um, I'm gonna, sorry So not set. Okay. I've interchanged the Okay, so this is the first location listed in this tab. 
Uh, let me remove this and add it back. That should show the view three or C. Okay. Now we're going to um, try the purchasing or the purchase order or the near receiving report. Just close this. So I go inventory and purchases, purchases and new purchase order. I'm gonna choose Alpine distributors. And I'm, I'm gonna add an item. So for example, that item. So as you can see, um, it shows the first location. And when sending a PO, we cannot yet um, change the location or edit location. So it is only when we receive it. So let's just send this one. Go back. Okay, and let's receive it one quantity. And there we go, we can now be able to um, change the location. So since it's just only having one um, location, just say it's under this, or it's received, uh, say for example, that one, just change this to zero, and then change this to one. And then click OK, and it's now showing the correct location, and then I can now receive this. And also, if the way um, if the put away stop is set up. Okay, just wait for a moment. All right, there we go. So put the put away priority, for example, in this um, in this location. Or wait, let me add a new location. One. Okay, so for example, this um, can is first priority. So purchases, purchase order. And so that is R six. Okay. So as you can see, it um, it it shows the location where I set the um, put away priority as the first priority, since because um, as per 
um, here the stock put away priorities. Um, System 5 uses this to place stock into locations when stock is received through purchase orders or receiving reports. So let's receive that one first. And then see if, and it shows that location with the put away um, first uh, first put away priority. Just let's receive this one. Okay. So yeah, uh, these are just a um, few examples since our time is limited. So I'm going back to my. Um, presentation PowerPoint presentation to share to you how or what do you need to use um, the advanced inventory control so if you are a new Winward customer um, first speak with your account manager about advanced inventory control it is a stock management feature that requires regular maintenance and is intended to add additional control over stock in de departmentalized inventory it is not intended to be used when stock is not tracked by department. Second, advanced inventory control works best with average costing of the inventory. So discuss this with your account manager and your in-house in-house accounting team. Selecting a costing method has tax implications and it is not easy to change between average FIFO or first in first out and LIFO or last in first out costing methods. We do not recommend making changes to the costing method after the system has been used to process transactions. Third, once the AIC feature has been enabled in your license codes, you can complete the location setup. This must be um, completed prior to assigning locations to your stock and cannot be changed once stock is allocated to locations in the system. This step requires detailed planning and um, cannot be taken lightly. Fourth, once the configuration is completed, the process of putting existing stock into locations can begin. This can be done using a manual process through the use of the part load feature. And if you are an existing um, Winford customer, First, if you already use the single location field on the inventory records, this data will be lost. It will need to be removed and redefined to be able to use AIC. Our professional services team can assist you with this. And the second one, I have already mentioned that one of the previous slide. Third, your stock needs to be departmentalized. The inventory combined um, across all departments option is not recommended and should not be used with the AIC feature. And the fourth one, I've also mentioned this one on the previous slide. So that would be um, the end of my presentation. If you have questions or clarifications, you can shoot it on the um, question box. Uh, thank you, Abby, for that uh, presentation. Uh, so yes, so we do have some few questions here. Uh, the first question we got is coming from Kat. She says, what if your two locations have a different layout where the products are stored? Okay, um, that can be set up in the location segment. Um, don't worry, once you purchase the module, um, our uh, professional services team will assist you with that one in planning or setting that up. Yep, I hope that answers your question, uh, Kat. Another one from Samantha. She says, uh, when, when the invoice or PO is printed, will the location be seen? Yeah, that can be set up 
um, in the invoice form designer. Okay. Uh, another here, does, does this work on the same, uh, does this work the same with serial numbers? Yes. Sorry, I did not like um, show you examples with the serial numbers, but yes, it will work. Yeah, so basically, yes, Samantha, you can um, set up your PO forms or even an invoice form if you wish to, to uh, show that particular locations or serial numbers as well on the printout. Okay, another one here from Nicole. Uh, she says, so we do not, uh, hold on, let me just, it's a big question. Let me make it a bit bigger. Okay. Okay, so our question here, so we do not currently have locations to have set up in our system, which is like, which I do not think we need, but, but if we had a regular item come in or be returned from customer, can we still set the item up as quarantined location or somehow mark it as damage in the inventory so others will see that in the system or possibly stock put away priorities? Can this be used? Oh, sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Go ahead. Sorry. Yeah, that's that's the yeah, that's the question uh, basically. Yeah, I think I have under, um, understood your question. Yes, you can um, set it up as a quarantine. Um, uh, you just need to like, but make sure that you have the um, what do you call this one access to do that one, or you can just ask your um, admin to help you set that up. Yeah, so basically, um, Nicole, uh, this particular feature for quarantined uh, location and stuff like that is only going to be available if you are using AIC. But if AIC is not, uh, but if you're not, if your system is not um, licensed for AI, AIC, then this feature is not available for regular inventories. Uh, another one here from Sean Williams. Can this be used for product returns at point of sale? Uh, can this be used for product returns at point of sale? Can return item to be put into an open box location? Do you mean you can choose um, location as what I have? Uh, I think um, my understanding you. is. He was wondering if uh, if can you use location when you return the product? Yes, absolutely. Okay, so I hope Abby was able to answer her questions uh, uh, while waiting for a few more if they do have. Uh, Abby, why don't you discuss about uh, some of the, uh, the, what do you call this, uh, the uh, details that you can discuss for uh, them about um, yeah. some links, basically. Yeah, sure. So here, okay. Um, I know that um, I've already mentioned this one earlier already, but yeah, um, you can, again, you can sign up for future webinars or view previously recorded uh, recorded events. Just go to windwardsoftware.com slash webinars. And we have here um, the available resources in the help center. Um, just go to wavewardsoftware.com slash help. And if you want to search our knowledge base, um, submit and track support tickets that can be in the customer care portal. Just go to support.wavewardsoftware.com. And Windward Learning Academy, um, you can spin up new employees and have lesson based topics. Just go to academy dot windward on cloud dot com and if you um, experience entire system down unable to take payment cannot log into system five or recovering from a power outage um, you are qualified to submit um, an emergency ticket just submit it to windwardsoftware.com slash emergency 
And if you want to get guidance from one of our professional services specialists um, working with system integrity or accounting rule-based plan, contact your account manager for a code or just go to windrosoftware.com slash professional services. I guess that would be all. Okay, thank you, Abby. Uh, one more question from uh, Lou. Can barcode scanner be used with AIC? Can, sorry, can what? Barcodes? Barcode, barcode scanner. Hey, um, I believe yes, because that will um, that will refer to the um, once you once you scan the barcode that will like tabulate the part number and the part number is um, as long as it is the part number is set up um, with those locations. Uh, okay. And did I Let's answer see. your question? Uh, I hope Abby was able to answer your questions, guys. But while waiting, if there's more, uh, let me just uh, invite everyone for our next webinar, which is going to be on um, September 7th. September 7th, uh, that's going to be the die a lot or select lots. Uh, if you're guys interested, please come and join us again at the same time. It's going to be um, 1 p.m. until 1.30 Pacific time on Thursday, September 7th. So I hope uh, we can be able to see you guys. And there's a few more schedules as well ahead. Um, I hope you can check them out and uh, and hopefully we can be able you can be able to join us as well. So um, I guess uh, that's it for all the questions. If you still have any more questions after this uh, webinar, please uh, request or create a ticket on that one through our portal and surely support can be able to assist you with that one again thank you so much for joining us web, uh, for today's webinar again thank you as well abby abby for that wonderful presentation i hope to see you guys next time have a great evening thank you thank you guys have a good day